Hey guys, so Cal Val here. You are listening to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. It was day one on Monday Night Raw, the first Raw of 2024. Seth Rollins defends his title against Drew McIntyre. We had the women's title matches and a former champion made his electrifying return. And also, are we finally getting the build to the match we've been waiting for the last four years for? All that and so much more on the Hit in a Turnbuckle channel. Raw review with me, Adam Cousins, and my bro, Chacho, who's coming back through the forbidden door. Raw is Robinson. Good evening, Dave. How are you, my friend? Evening, mate. Yeah, I think, I think I've picked a really good week to start watching Raw again. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You watch it every week because... <laughs> well, you know, I've been keeping I've been keeping tabs on it and, and what, seeing the results and... But I haven't sat and watched a full three hour. But to be honest, the biggest compliment I can give Rule didn't feel like three hours at all. It felt like about an hour and a half. I, I couldn't believe how much I enjoyed it. Um, Rock was a big part of that. Mm. But yeah. I thought up and down the card, it was a great, great night for the WWE. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to SmackDown as well. Yeah, excellent. Just want to say before we, we start, Raw, just big shout out to James Ellis for the shirt. It's uh, rhymes just like me. It is me, isn't it? Brilliance. Uh, <laughs> the embroidery, uh, brilliance embroidery from James Ellis. Big thanks to that for the uh, the drip. Um, but yeah, you're right. Raw was great. Um, now, they started off with Becky Lynch and Nia Jax. And a lot of people, you know, uh, rightfully so, have been, have been a bit critical of Nia and, and how she's been in the ring and injuring a lot of people. And this match is actually five years in the making as well because people yeah. remember that Becky Lynch returned, basically had the best run of her career from a segment with Nia Jax before Survivor Series where Nia Jax punched her in the nose and, and broke all of her nose. And that's kind of where the unsafe Nia come into play. Becky become the man, and they never really locked horn since. Now I got released, she come back. Um, this match really showed me, Dave. I don't know about you, not only how good Becky is, but how great Nia Jax actually is. When you put her in the ring with a rap, I mean, she's been in the ring with Charlotte and stuff like that, but it's kind of gone off the rails a bit. This one was picture perfect from start to finish. Yeah, she seemed very, very motivated. I mm. think the story was great going into it, obviously. What they they perhaps didn't think they they'd have an opportunity to finish this story off, and it might still not be finished by the way it ended. Mm. Um, but that opportunity to have the one on one match between Becky and Nia, um, mm. I got, when when this first started, because I'm used to a, a, a different style of wrestling, I kind of as it started, I thought, is this going to be for me? Uh it was great. It was really. <laughs> it's probably Nia's best match, yeah. certainly the best match I can recall her having. Um, and she's had some good matches in a run. She had a real good run in NXT. Um, but on, in terms of the main roster, I think this was the best match. And um, yeah, I really, really like the finish to it as well. Yeah, the finish, Becky, Becky went for the guillotine leg. Nia caught her with an absolute belter of a right hand. Um, yeah. She'd done the, uh, the the sort of bonsai drop, the Yokozuna style-esque for the, for the Annihilation, big... I think she calls it. That's the word. Thank you, David. Uh, annihilation. Uh, that's why I bring him on the show, so he, he remembers these little bits and pieces that I don't. Um, yeah, the Annihilation. Becky was then... They cut back to Becky after uh, Nia was, had her hand raised and she was bleeding from the mouth. I don't think that's the end of the feud, to be honest with you. I think you're right there. I think it will continue on. But, uh, yeah, it, it, to be honest, it surprised me. You know, when I saw it come out, when I saw this match start, I was like, oh... Jesus, you know, yeah. is this the right sort of way to start it? But it it, it was just great. It really it kind of yeah, I did. I, it, it turned me around straight away. And in the past, this might have been something that you know, uh, uh, the, an older style. If there was limitations on them in terms of what they could and couldn't do in the ring, mm. might have been something that I'd have skimmed through and half watched. But I was captivated by it. I think there was a lot of great action in the women's division throughout the course of the show. Yeah. Um, but they really, really started off strong here. And uh, I, I didn't think I'd be sitting here saying how great a uh, uh, Nia Jax Becky Lynch match was. <laughs> it, and But it was. And I would love to see them finish it, whether that's at the Rumble or, or down the line. Um, yeah, props to both of them. 
I must say, uh, yeah, I was I was equally surprised, even though I'm a big WWE fan. But as somebody that they that obviously you're a bigger AEW fan, you hadn't watched WWE in, in a while, mate, you know, even since the, the TKO acquisition, and it's kind of you said on on the World's End preview, it's kind of moved to a more sports presentation. Yeah. Did it feel different for you the watching this for the first time in in a while? <clears throat> yeah, it's a strange one as well because there was some presentation. Yeah differences that I noticed even the way they started the show where you had Cole and Barrett in the ring I mean I know they called it day one um but coinciding with that is Kevin Dunn obviously leaving has yeah. been part of the company for the past 30 40 years I think 40 yeah. years he's probably years closer so, yeah right. yeah, yeah it's, right. it's between 30 and 40 it's yeah. a long time and obviously he's the guy that sits in the truck and Vince maybe had the ideas and, and Kevin Dunn was the guy that made it happen or, or had a team around him that could make it happen visually. Um, so whether that changed anything, maybe I was just more aware of that because I knew it was the first episode of Raw without Kevin Dunn. Mm. Um, but yeah, there was definitely a different feel to the show. Definitely a more sports kind of feel. Like you had the great sports entertainment bits and we'll we'll get to that, you know, mm. um, because it was like reliving you know our youth at uh, one part yeah. of the show, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was I was really impressed. Um, you know, we'll get to the matches individually as we get to them, but there was so much I want to kind of talk about on this night's episode of Raw, and all of it was positive. Yeah, it really was. Um, moving on to the first uh, sort of interview segment or a first sort of promo segment, it was obviously Cody Rose uh, come out and was basically saying, you know, praising Nakamura a little bit, uh, and he's saying how much he's a force to be reckoned with. And he wants him again in a match. He wants you to bring his poison miss, poison words, whatever makes, basically whatever makes you feel you can stop me from what I need to be because it ends and it ends now. Nakamura comes out, basically says, you know, he's going to stop him finishing the story. Um, and I think that match is set for next week. Now, this is the Nakamura I've wanted since way, since he, you know, come up from NXT. When he's in NXT, he was fine. They ballsed him right up over the last God knows how many years. I'm really surprised. I remember talking to Parker about this uh, at the sort of middle of last year even and saying I'm really was wondering whether Shinsuke would make the jump over to AEW because the style and the way that they worked would suit him better um, <clears throat> than WWE. Um, and I feel as if this is it, what I want, but it's still going to end in sort of heartbreak, really, for Nakamura because there's obvi Cody Rhodes obviously will pick up the win probably next week when they fight. But do you think with this that it, is it too little, too late for WWE to make Nakamura what they should have made him five, six years ago? Yeah, I'm not sure. It's a difficult one. <clears throat> the what has improved with Nakamura is is English, mm -hmm. um, but also blending that better English with the Japanese uh, and the subtitles. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. I know they've been doing that for a while and I've yeah. caught bits of it. And and I think that's really, really helped him develop his character. Um, and he's very like a sinister, evil character, which, you know, I think I, I we haven't really had much character from him in the past few years. We've just had, you know, appearances we've had good matches but ultimately he doesn't win too many of them particularly on the bigger stages yeah um so they've really set him up nicely in saying that he's up against cody you know <laughs> there's a lot of questions and we'll get to it um and, and speculation over what the future has to hold has in store for cody given the returns um and not just the returns on raw but the returns to wwe from a few people and how that affects WrestleMania. So I'm not sure how Cody fares, but you would still expect him to beat Nakamura next week. Um, yeah, will, yeah. Is this the second match that they'll be having? They I'm, faced sure each other they had one. I'm sure they had one at a pay-per-view recently or, or a Raw, Cody won it. Uh, yeah. Which would basically mean, I might have even won it by DQ. I think Nakamura may have missed it him. I can't quite remember. It was, it was yeah. before the end of the year. Anyway, uh, yeah, I thought they'd competed uh, previously and, and had a match, um, but but yeah, you would think with the momentum going into the Rumble as well, Cody in the Rumble match, I believe. Yeah, Cody. Yes. Yeah, uh, well, he's not. Oh, I don't know if he's officially confirmed he's in it, but I think he, he will be anyway. Doesn't yeah, I thought so. I know a few people have confirmed. Punk's confirmed that he's in the Rumble, yeah. and I. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, a difficult one, difficult to because uh, because I definitely think they're doing something very right with Shinsuke at the minute. Mm. Um, Cody's the biggest star they've got, arguably, particularly the biggest baby face uh, in terms of consistent, you know, week in, week yeah. out. He's there. He's like the, the modern day John Cena. He's, he's how I see him. Um, and he's spotting the company. I think he's the top merch seller as well. Um, uh, not anymore. The last year. Oh, okay. oh last year. Absolutely. Yeah. The last year. Yeah. Him and J- Jey Uso, I believe. Oh, LA Knight, of course. LA Knight, yeah. But uh, well, not not at the moment, no. Uh, that's obviously Mr. Punk now. Yeah. But he's, a, he's their flagship, you know, he's yeah. their top guy. Absolutely. Top, yeah. So. Yeah, and with it being WrestleMania season, um, you wouldn't expect him taking many losses, if any. So, no. yeah, I'll be I'll be tuning in next week, and uh, that match will be. I'm sure it will main event the show, but the the result will be really interesting. Yeah, it certainly will be. Uh, I'm looking for. I am looking forward to it. I, I just, I just, I my personal opinion is it's too late um, with Nakamura and WWE, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, I, 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 as I said to Parker, as you know. The, back in the middle of last year that I, I feel as if it's too late now and he maybe should make a jump but then Parker did make the point he's making a lot of money he's comfortable you know they're, yeah. they're side you got to run, run into it but there's my, a few guys there you know you, the, the the futures and certain Drew McIntyre's mm-hmm. another one Get to that. Uh, I was going to ask you about Seamus as well what, what his kind of situation is but there's a few top guys there that mm. they're on that level they can go out there and they can trust them in the big matches but there's only so many times they can be beaten in those big matches before they stop looking, you know, a credible threat. It's like what we were talking about the other day, the, the, you know, the momentum of Swerve and people like that when we were saying how that could derail it of a loss. And in regards to Sheamus, um, his contract was up this year, but he has been out for a good number of months now. WWE can exercise the extension for that. Yeah. I, I think Seamus is another one, and, and we'll get into Drew a little bit later on, that I, I think will make the jump, or p- potentially. I don't know. Maybe Seamus is maybe one that I don't think will, but we'll, we'll get into Drew in, in a minute. Um, yeah. The next match was it was Imperium, and it was thrown against two wrestlers that have actually lost their partners due to injury. Uh, Sami Zayn picked up an injury recently, uh, and Xavier Woods has been injured. Um, this is one of those scary moments, and uh, you have to really commend the work of the referee and the doctor uh, during this match. Now, they were, the match was going. It was really good, a good, really entertaining match. Um, then there was a drop kick that I think Jay hit um, Vinci, uh, Giovanni Vinci with, and his head snapped back. I mean, you, you could yeah. get side pick. The referee went straight over. The doctor went straight over. They called the match off. That, for me... Because that you know what wrestlers are like sometimes. They just, yeah, I'm fine. I, I can carry on. Can carry on. To them, to literally do what they had to do and finish the match, you, you do have to. As good as the match was, you have to com, com, bloody. I'll get the word out. Commend what they yeah. to protect the wrestlers' safety in there. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it was it was a scary moment, mm. and I think the the right call was made. Yeah, in the heat of the moment, because. There was a little, there was a slight delay, and you know you could see Jay Uso's reaction. Yeah, uh, something wasn't quite right. Yeah, but you could see also Ludwig Kaiser was trying to get in the ring because yeah. he probably saw that um, Giovanni was injured, so to get him out of the ring and maybe Ludwig goes in and, and finishes the match two on one. And they very nearly achieved that. I think Giovanni even got to the corner and Ludwig came in just as the bell rang. Yeah, but. What what I think you've got to consider is if that match would have carried on mm-hmm. and they would have covered it up, that might have stopped Giovanni getting the attention that he needed because Absolutely. the match was still ongoing. Yeah. So even though they very nearly covered it over, I think the fact that they rang the bell when they did got got him the medical attention. And, you know, creatively, wrestling-wise, they can just run that back. They can, you know, when he's fit and ready, they can they can do that again. Um, but when you're dealing with a head injury, concussion, or anything around there, mm. s- seconds and, and minutes are, are vital. And yeah, I think real real credit to the referee, to the doctor. Uh, I think now the referees have, have actually got two way communication. Yeah. Whereas in the in the past they used to just get instructions in their ear. Yes. They can actually report back, and mm-hmm. you could hear the see the ref saying that he's not responding. Um, so I think given the circumstances, it looks like he left by his own free will and he walked out and yeah. and he, I think he's tweeted saying he's okay. 
Um, but in in the heat of the moment, as it happened, I think they absolutely made the right call. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And as you say, seconds and minutes are vital, especially with those that can prolong a, a week out to months out, or even yeah. Another, because you know, if Ludwig would have gone in and, and finished the match, and Giovanni's just lying under the bottom rope, um, kind of not playing dead, you know, just just selling the the injury, even though it was a legitimate injury, then that that match could have gone on another five minutes. And, and yeah. when it's a head injury, you haven't got five minutes. So yeah, it looked like everything's fine, and then that's great news. But I think that precedent was the right one, and I don't think just WWE. Um, I, I think all wrestling companies should take note of that. And the wrestlers more than likely will, will want, want to carry on. So yeah. the decision has to be taken out of their hands. And um, I think that was a perfect example of what should happen when the unfortunate does happen in the ring. Yeah, exactly that. And yeah, as I say, kudos to the referee and, and the doctor for doing that. And we, we hope that, you know, he probably doesn't watch the show, but we hope Giovanni uh, Vinci is, is better and, and he'll be back soon. And, and that can make a big difference between even just one week out to months out. So yeah, I know that he said he was fine. So hopefully, uh, you know, that is the case. And we'll see him probably on Raw next week when he luck providing he passes the concussion protocol. So yeah, all the best, Giovanni. And um, we'll see you when you're fit and well. Um, <laughs> the next segment, and this is kind of, you know, you were alluding to a bit of entertainment uh, a little bit ago. Um, Ms. TV, um, he was going to have the Judgment Day on. <laughs> and of course, the honorary member, not member, of Judgment Day, uh, R-Truth, <laughs> come out. Um, a big shout out quickly to R-Truth. This guy has been, a, he doesn't age, he seems to get younger when everyone gets older. He's been in wrestling for so long. Um, it's just so hilariously funny. Yeah. I, I think he's great. Um, anyway, to cut a long story short, he come out. Biz was like, "Oh, it's the most likable member of the Judgment Day. Where are the others?" And and uh, JD McDonough and Dominic Masiro followed suit a bit later on. After a bit of back and forth and a bit of comedy, it ended up with the awesome truth, Miz and our truth reuniting, which was way back when CM Punk was in the WWE the first time. Uh, that was when the authority, like Triple Eight and all of that sort of stuff was going on. They reunited and took on our truth and JD McDonough. And actually, it was a fun tag team match. Now, JD McDonough can actually go in the ring. There's no doubt about it. Dominic Mysterio heavily uh, improving in, in the ring as well. Um, this match was a really fun match, Dave. It was a, a, a um, the skull crushing finale uh, picked up the victory here for Miz and Truth, but just a fun match. But it, Miz and our Truth, just before we get on to Judgment Day a little bit, those two guys go under the radar so much, but they are so in a way they are actually vital to the WWE's product. Yeah, they're the perfect WWE superstars. You know, um, they're they're so entertaining and so professional. Um, so good in the ring, both of them. I, I think Miz is a really, really solid performer, always has been. Um, but I think our truth and the callback to little Jimmy, I enjoyed as well. <laughs> um, I was, you said the awesome truth, it's been a while since we saw them together. They actually faced, I think it was the Rock and Cena, yeah, Survivor number, of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it was nice that they had a bit of history to play into as well. Um, but our truth's performance in this, not knowing who he should be tagging, and he kept winking to um, <laughs> Dominic as well. He yeah. hates JD. I think that's yeah. quite a really funny aspect as well, that he just yeah. can't stand JD McDonough. Um, just just all-round great segment, real good sports entertainment, um, but a good match as well. And I think Dominic, he was in his hometown, he was in San Diego, yeah. and the heat, the, it was just nuclear. I know that's what the fans do. They, they just boo him. Yeah, constantly. Um, but I thought that he might get a little bit of a respite in his hometown. But no, no, they give it to him both barrels. <laughs> and uh, I, I really enjoyed this. I really, really enjoyed every part of it. The comedy, the wrestling, the story development. And I'm interested to see what happens next with JD and, and Truth in regards to the Judgment Day. Yeah, me too. Uh, just again, we sort of shout out um, McDonough. Uh, we sort of shout out Miz and our True, but McDonough and, and Mysterio can really go uh, as well. Yeah. Um, and again, they fly under the radar a little bit. Uh, don't miss you say Mysterio's got the nuclear heat, and he has that. Even if they do sometimes pipe in, um, he does have. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that, that sometimes that's happened. But when it's, I, I don't think it was piped in last night because 
you, you could tell it looked very natural, like when you were looking at the crowd and, and as yeah. and when it was done, it was, yeah, I don't think it was piped in at all in San Diego. No. And, and again, say Mysterio and, and JD Madonna are again, very under the radar, but they are very, very good at what yeah. they do. Speaking of very good at what they do, Rhea Ripley and Ivy Noel uh, for the women's title. Uh, we wax lyrical about the women at the start of the show. This match in the Ivy Nile is like a pocket rocket. She's like a mini Jordan Grace because she's got the yeah. she's got the muscle side of her, but she, yeah, in a height wise, she's you know, relatively small. Um, but her and Rhea, I mean, that was Rhea's best match for me in, in a long time. I didn't think in a million Sundays that Rhea would drop. I don't see many titles changing between now and WrestleMania, other than the yeah. women's tag may change, but. Generally, the titles will stay on them title holders at least until WrestleMania. Maybe one at the Rumble, but these two put on a really great match. That headbutt when she went for the cross body, my God, yeah. um, was so good. Rhea Ripley retains unsurprisingly, but it was such, again, a great utilization of women in wrestling. Yeah, I, I wanted to mention it earlier, but I thought we should wait until we got to the, the relevant match. Yeah. Um, Ivy Nile. Uh, I don't know, like, I haven't seen a, a great deal of her. I know she's had a couple of matches on Raw, but I don't think she's had a, a singles match. Um, and, and she's predominantly been in NXT. Yeah. She looks like she slotted straight into that women's division and she didn't look out of place whatsoever. Um, you, you could say maybe she could have had a couple of wins going into the match, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's done her any harm in her first singles match going up against the dominant Rhea Ripley and putting in that kind of performance. and And... What do we talk about on the Dynamite and Collision Review? We say give them time, yeah. and that's exactly what they did. It was it was such an incredible match, mm. um, great finish, and Ivy Nile for me now, she's made even in defeat. Yeah, I think ne next time we see her on Raw, she'll get a great reaction, and people will really want to see her up against some of the other women there. You know, the Becky Lynches and and you know. You could reel them off for Bianca Belair's in time. And, you know, I, I, I really think they've got a star in the making there in Ivy Nile. Uh, Rhea's great, obviously. She's yeah. got, we give her props and everybody gives her the props uh, in the past couple of years, particularly since she's picked that title up and a, a running in Judgment Day and a, a character as Mummy. Um, but Ivy Nile, really, really impressed with her. Yeah, it was one of those um, stand up and note, take notice um, it really uh, was. matches for Ivy Nile. And we want to see more of that. I mean, that's what we really like. Um, the women in general, they but they made great use of women on this one. And it, it, feuds that we, we can say this, feuds that matter. Yeah. The, the opening contest, that was five years in the making. We've been waiting to see it. You know, that one, the women, as you say, Ivy Nile didn't pick up many wins on her way to this match, but it was a pro like a proving ground match for her. Yeah to prove that she can hang with the best of the best. And she'd done that. So this was really good utilization of the women. And we're going to talk on Friday about, or Thursday or Friday about AEW, because there's two free agents that look as if they're locks now, which is going to be really exciting. And we'll talk about that when we do AEW. But the future is very bright for the WWE's women division as well, definitely. Um, i just got to say, on the Ivy Nile, I might be getting a little bit carried away, but mm -hmm. but straight away, you, you've got a women's Royal Rumble coming up. And mm -hmm. off the back of that performance, you've got a bit of a wild card there as well. I, mean, yeah. I don't expect that she would win it because there's, I mean, there'll probably be creative plans for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um as to what's going to happen and who's going to win and what what who's going to go on to WrestleMania is a challenge for the title, but she's got to be in the conversation, even not for this year, for next year. With those types of performances, I say she wouldn't be. Uh, she, there would be plenty worse winners than, than the likes of Ivan Nile, given what we saw her do against Rhea Ripley. Absolutely, yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. This year, maybe too, probably. I, I don't know when Jade Cargill's going to make that eventual debut. Yeah, I would expect that to be the Rumble. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. When, when else? Or what are they? Because she hasn't. I know she's appeared um, on Raw and Paper. And I don't know if she's been in NXT, but I don't think she's she not done been. anything other than just walked and, and yeah. been stage and met a few. I, my other thing with it is maybe the Rumble, or when one of them wins at Mania, she walks out as if to say, "I'm next." I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe. Delayed even further. We don't know what's going on in the performance center. How she's doing. 
she's money. No, no, get me wrong. She'll be, and she'll be money. But I, I think maybe it sort of died down a little bit. There's been obviously some other big returns si uh, has gone on since that, and we'll see with Jay Cargill. But Ivan Nile for me. The problem is, I suppose, if she is in the rumble and, and she's not going to win it, then then what direction do they go in? Exactly. As you say, so she, she is such a big potential star for the WWE. I mean, she, as you say, she's money, and and I think. I think we speculated for a long time that she could have a real, not just be a, a top wrestler there, but a, a, a bit of an icon, you know, a superstar. That's what WWE does. And she fits that mold perfectly. But yeah, if she's not going to go on to win the Royal Rumble match, then then where does she go from there? So interesting one, but I'm sure we'll be seeing her at some point in 2024. Oh, definitely, for sure. And not long before the Royal Rumble, uh, actually. Just while we're there, we do have a special guest that will be coming on to review the Royal Rumble, probably with us, Dave. And that is our good friend from the world of darts, Mr. Matthew Edgar, will be joining us uh, for the review of the Royal Rumble. Uh, review good. Um, they did announce that CM Punk would be back next week. So CM Punk hasn't really dropped a pipe bomb yet. But I, I, I'm, you know, that's, people have been critical of that. And I just think, well... You've been back for a cup. He's literally been back for a cup of coffee. You know what you're going to get. Patience is key. Yes. Because when he does drop it, it's going to be a nuke. <laughs> it's not going to mess yeah. about, is he? Yeah. Really, he's, he's, he's thrown a few bobs out, hasn't he? Yeah. A few, few things that kind of you can read between the lines yeah. with. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, Seth got the better of that exchange yep. the other week, in, in in my opinion. So I'm, I'm sure knowing uh, or watching Punk over the years, he, he's kind of going to be thinking up of his own ideas and things that he wants to say and, and stuff that he'll throw in. So yeah, next week's appearance, like they really do that well as well, advertise ahead of time mm. what's coming up. I think, you know, across wrestling, that's been something that's been really been improved in the past couple of years. Yeah, you know, it's not just what's happening on that night. We we seen things set up a week or two in advance sometimes, and uh, I think next week Raw shaping up to be a really good show. Yeah, and generally, I do agree with what Andy said. It's like an arc. They go, you go through like this time where it dips and then it yeah it kicks up, and this is usually the time when yeah, it, and it is <laughs> when it, yeah, and when everything's going so well as well, it, mm. it, it, it whatever they do seems to be. You know, being a massive success, you know, from the night to turn to gold. So, yeah, it's again, we say week in, week out, great time to be a wrestling fan. And 2024 has certainly started with a bang with this episode of Raw. Yeah, definitely, definitely has, man. And talking of bangs, they did announce that a former WWE champion would be making his return to, I mean, <laughs> they done this. Fucking brilliantly. Perfect. It was so good. The best bit was Samantha Irvin comes up. And if you've seen it, I don't know if you've seen it on social, the, the reaction of late, uh, her reaction later. But um, she said what she announced, it's the former W, you know, here comes a yeah. return. The, and the crowd are waiting. They're anticipating. And you could, you could feel it. You could feel this like, if you didn't know who it was, you could, you know, or what happens, you know, if you woke up a bit late and you're seeing it on social media, you don't get that. Same thing. I was on the edge of my seat. Who is it? And then they hit Jinder Mahal's music. The crowd, you could hear the groan from yeah. the crowd. Jinder Mahal comes out. He starts running down America. He starts talking in Arabic or whatever it was, or Punjab. Punjab, yeah. And then all of a sudden, the music of the rock hits. And the, obviously, the crowd shits himself. I think Andy had reached the point of orgasm back in Dunstable every year. He yeah. was Michael Cole had reached the point of orgasm during it when he walked out. Um, the Rock was the Rock back to the Attitude Era. There was a lot of ribbing on it, you know. Um, there was mention of Baywatch, one of the Rock, one of the Rock's disappointments. Yeah, that was full of And the Iron Sheik impression as well. I really loved that and as well. Sheik impression as well. The Rock does lay the smack down on uh, Eljinder Mahal, but it's more about what he said after, which has got... I mean, The Rock's return gets the people talking anyway. Yeah. But what The Rock said, he said, The Rock is going to go out in San Diego and he's a little hungry. I'm going to go and get something to eat. When The Rock goes out and get, the, get something to eat tonight, should The Rock sit in the boot? Should The Rock sit in the bar? Or should The Rock sit at the head of the table? Now, that actually did get 
a response from Roman Reigns on on Twitter, which was a load of laughing emojis. Yeah. Um, obviously, Dave, what were your thoughts on the segment? And are we finally now? Is it now the time where we're going to get the Rock and Roman? You did mention about implications, but are we now mm. going to get it? Is this now? W if the Rock agreed to do what we think he's going to do. It, it's just got to be. I mean, I just got goosebumps again, like you just <laughs> repeating what The Rock said. You know, yeah. I, I got goosebumps when he came out and I got goosebumps when he said it at the time. And I, 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 there's just nobody like him. There's just nobody like him. The, the most electrifying man in sports entertainment has been for a long time and, and still is. Um, one of the most recognisable celebrities in the world. One of the most successful wrestlers of all time. Um, there's been no reason for this to happen or him to say that if it wasn't going to lead to WrestleMania. Um, I've been looking about online today and, and th- seeing people's reactions to it. And there's there's some people saying maybe they string something out and, you know, it's maybe it's for SummerSlam, but the, just the timing of it. But I know it's day one again. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of emphasis on that. Yeah. This is prime peak WrestleMania season, there's no way that that's an accident or, you know, that, that's just got to set up Roman Reigns versus The Rock at WrestleMania in Philadelphia. The question is what happens to everybody else? Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, we'll have a lot of fun over the next few weeks speculating over that. Um, I've been trying a fantasy book in my head this afternoon. Um, just... Where does it leave Cody? Where does it leave Punk? Where does it leave Rollins, Orton? There's so many, and there's so many, there's so many fun things to to consider as well. When when you're looking at Cody finishing the story, you're looking at Punk back in WWE. That we know, once that WrestleMania main event, we know that was a big part of him leaving and his dissatisfaction in the first place. Mm-hmm. So you would think that's still equally as important to him. And and that, was there a discussion around that when he went back? Um, there's so and and also to continue the theme of the episode and the, the the fantastics women's action, you know, really the women deserve a, a main event at WrestleMania on night one or what to, night two. They didn't get it last year because of the tag match, and you could probably <clears> forgive <throat> them that and say, well, the story was so good with the bloodline yeah. that you give them that main event on night one. Mm. Um, You've also got rumors about Stone Cold Steve Austin doing the rounds as well. It's yeah. I mean, they've they've got so they've got more stars and more re- they've got more potential there than they need. But it's a great problem to have. Um mm. I don't know how you how you keep everybody happy and how you how you book that show. Um, you know, I don't know what the main events are gonna be anymore. You could almost have a third night. Oh, don't you, can start. Have a week. <laughs> you can have a week of WrestleMania given. You're booking this, isn't it? <laughs> well, well, you consider the people involved. Yeah, and that, that's true. without thinking about Brock Lesnar. That's without thinking about Gunther. You know, who you could just said two there, each that, other. That, yeah, exactly that. And that's a main event on its own. Exactly. That's a main yeah. event for the IC title. That that would be an incredible match as well. The, the card, the rest, this WrestleMania card is going to be stacked. And it was going to be anyway. We've mm-hmm. had the involvement of The Rock. Mm-hmm. Um, as you can tell, I'm I'm really, really excited and you know fascinated as to how the next few months play out and, and what we get at WrestleMania. I do fear for Cody a little bit, mm-hmm. but you just think he's got to get that moment. And you said this afternoon when we were talking, you think felt it got to be against Roman as well. But mm-hmm. I mean, you've got obviously Randy Orton in the mix and, and there's an interesting dynamic there between... The master and the apprentice in, yeah. in Cody and and uh, Orton. So yeah. yeah, and we got a big super show in Australia between now and Elimination between the Rumble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I don't know. I'll let you talk because I've said enough. But what what do you think we're going to be seeing over the next few months? Well, for start, Elimination Chamber is going to be on a six a.m. over here in the UK. So it's a nice one, nice early one for us, which is more you know I I, I nice, watched yeah. it live, so I watched it one approach. I went to work a couple of hours later. Um, that was sad of me, I know, but I had to watch it this time. I don't normally. Um, I'm kind. Of, my point: the Rock and Roman doesn't need a title. The, no, the, the, the match itself is going to be head of the table. That's basically what the match is going to. You know. I I think uh, to to uh, sorry to uh, oh, put you up, but know. I just wanted to say, I think having the title involved with it, it, mm. it actually hurts the match. 
Yeah. Because I think that makes it a little bit more predictable that Roman would win. Mm. I think if you're going in without the title, you don't know which way it could go. If it's a one-off match for the head of the table, because we don't expect The Rock to stick around no. after WrestleMania because Hollywood's reopened and, mm-hmm. you know, he's he's got a busy schedule there. But, yeah, I'll carry on, mate. you still got one other name, John Cena. <laughs> exactly. Now, with exactly. Flair and AEW, I'm certain that they're going to want Cena to beat their record. I'm absolutely, I put money on it. At some point, it doesn't have to be WrestleMania, but obviously yeah, WrestleMania yeah. season, there was talk of Cena and Logan Paul. There's talk of, you know, a couple of other bits. I mean, Gunther and Brock, you've already mentioned. Um, I forgot about Punk, Logan Paul. Yeah, Punk for sure is going to want a main event. I, I just, my quick question, going back to AEW, and if you remember his feud with MJF, is he going to feel a bit of a hypocrite if he does main event night one of a two night, three night spectacular after that promo that he cut on MJF about the, the grass being greener and stuff? You know, there is that. But, you know, I think Punk and Rollins main event night one, I think that's near enough a lock. Not say a lock. I mean, nothing's a lock in wrestling right now. The I think gone the wrong. Rock was the reason Punk didn't headline as well. Remember, because he said yeah. something in, in, I don't know if it was the pipe bomb, and he said he felt sick. They had to sit there while Dwayne mm-hmm. main evented. And it's mm-hmm. Dwayne. I'm sorry, Punk, Seth doesn't compete with, nothing competes with Roman yeah. versus The Rock. That's the biggest match in wrestling. There is There's a, nothing on that level. No, there is a possibility that Roman can wrestle twice. And if and he might not necessarily him and Cody might not even necessarily main event. He they could put that on the out you know the the start of the second hour of WrestleMania well, night one, and then have WrestleMania night two against The Rock, and he could drop yeah. the first night or vice versa. I mean, I, I don't think him and Rock would have to close whatever show they they're on. It, it would have to be the closer. It, they couldn't put yeah. that on. You know. Yeah, I suppose Cody and Roman could open night one of WrestleMania. Can you imagine that? And then Roman and Rock could close it. And if Roman's going to drop the title night one, he can beat the Rock night two. I mean, that's that's perhaps a workaround. Mm. But I don't know. I mean, last few years, we've had like five or six matches on each night of Mania, I want to say. You know, when you start writing down the matches that we're expecting, because I'm I'm sure LA Knight AJ Styles is going to be Randy Orton. Yeah, maybe that's Rumble rather than the you've WrestleMania. Still got, though, but... You've still got people like then you've got like, the Bailey and the stuff with damage control. That's going to come to a head. We thought that was going to come to a head with the return of Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks. She is now actually near enough, well, not confirmed, but it's likely that she debuts as early as Wednesday tomorrow on Dynamite, which is a massive coup. For that, I mean, Charlotte's probably not going to be ready now. She's got surgery. We hope that goes well. You've got those. You've got the women. You've got Rhea Ripley would likely lose the title at, at um, you know, WrestleMania. You've still got stuff. Judgment Day is still there. You've got oh, Kevin Owens. If you say Stone, maybe even Stone Cold Steve Austin against Punk. Maybe Punk now Stone could Cold they do has that? been rumored. Could they even do that? Could they even have Punk get thrown out of the Rumble by Steve Austin? Yeah, yeah. That, that again, <laughs> if we get in Rocket Mania, we get Stone Cold at the Rumble, man. Yeah, it's... we could sit here all night and talk this sort of stuff. Well, um, yeah, and as I say, when you start writing the names down and the potential matches, there's going to be people that unfortunately aren't on it. And as I say, Lesnar, you've got that. Him and Gunther is that, that is as near enough a lock as you're going to get it at a minute. That one, yeah, that yeah. is going to be. Uh, I. What I hope with that, and I know we're we're going way ahead, we're not talking about Raw at the minute. What I hope with that is that it's not just a good for he he literally anni- either annihilation either way. If you know, I, I don't want the match yeah. to start Brock to pick him up F5 and finish it, or good for to pick him up powerbomb finish. I want yeah. I want that to go and Lesnar's matches haven't gone. I mean, he's had a couple of long ones with Roman where they've been last man standing and all of that sort of stuff. But he hasn't had a long one-on-one match in so long. But that match deserves to have uh, that. That match near enough excites me as more as The Rock and, and Roman because it the way they built up Gunter and they kind of done the same thing what they've done with Roman. Gunter hasn't had it as long, but he looks unstoppable. Whereas Roman needs that help. Roman's matches have had bloodline interference in for the last two years. Gunther 
has gone on this path of destruction where no one has touched him. They've had a couple of close matches where, yeah. you know, they've come close to beating him, but he has won it himself. He hasn't had that interference. And for me, that makes Gunter more opposing than, say, Roman Reigns. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, as you say, it's been a really long title run as well. Um, you know, oh, yeah. all good things come to an end. Could you imagine a situation where Brock Lesnar is the Intercontinental Champion? I mean, that's a fascinating one in itself. But as you say, I'd, I'd really like to see a proper uh, a fight there, not just a quick mm-hmm. match. You know, yeah. something that's going to do it justice because it's it's a mouthwatering uh, prospect, that match. Um, yeah. Someone that we haven't spoken about, and he could really, really hold um, a lot of the answers. And maybe it's too soon for him to cash in. But Damien Priest walking around with that briefcase, and I know we'll get to his um, his involvement mm. following the main event or at the yeah. height of the main event. But you know, when's he going to cash in? Would we expect that to be before, yeah. during, after WrestleMania? Like it's uh, it, that's that's another person that's potentially in the mix, not on the level no. of the Rock and Roman and mm. Punk and then even perhaps Rollins, but. Somebody that they're high on, somebody that always has good matches, somebody that's rightfully, you know, seeing your money in the bank, you know, somebody that they clearly see that could hold that title, one of the titles. Um, so could he factor into anything going into WrestleMania? Could do. He could do. Uh, again, you're right. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have that. Uh, you know, made the stature, but he's got that briefcase. We will touch on that in a minute. You're going to have one of those classic Adam rants about that in, in, oh. <laughs> in a bit. Um, before we get to that, there, there was an, yet another women's match. This was a tag. Um, it was Shayna and Zoe Stark versus Natalia and Tegan Knox. I don't know if this was a, 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 a number one contenders match or whatever. Um, but again, it sh- the, the story I don't think was there much uh, in this. But again, it was a good showcase. I mean, Natalia, we always say she has been, I want to say a wasted talent in the WWE, but she is so good. And she could, you know, not necessarily, if this wasn't scripted as such, she would out-wrestle probably near enough everybody on the roster. Um, this match itself was perfectly, you know, perfectly reasonable. I want to say the weakest match on the card, but not because it was bad, but just because everything else was so good. Yeah, and also what it was following. You know, it had no <laughs> chance. It had no <laughs> chance. I mean, everybody was still talking about The Rock, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, people watching live were were kind of had a rock hangover. You know, you, you, yeah. you, they were in a really uh, poison chalice, I suppose, or a position that they couldn't really... It could have been anybody. You could have had, I don't know, you could have had any number of matches after that and it would have been, it would have suffered by, yeah. you know, what we'd just seen, like the big surprise. And, you know, going back to the way they did it, it was so, they, they basically trolled us. But like, oh, we, mate, that was so, we, if you've seen it, and I don't know if you have, and it's been doing the rounds, which was the ring, and the ring announcer, Samantha Irvin's reaction. Yeah, which they do a lot of this thing where they put the camera on and it wasn't like one of these things where they're doing it because it was a prize. If you go on social media, they do a lot of it because she announces names in such a great way that they put a camera so that she can they can upload it to YouTube and stuff like that. They've done it with her, and she's sitting there bored, like she's bored with with uh, Mahal talking, and then rocks me. I mean, she's like she jumps up like a fan. She like. Oh, it's absolutely. I did put a silly meme on it, like when you finished all the mince pies and someone comes in with another box. <laughs> it's just so yeah. I don't think stupid like that on socials, but it really ca- that itself was. It was literally like us sitting there thinking, "What is this shit?" And yeah. then the rock, and you know, everyone jumped. You know, it was it's just such a good thing. The way they done it was brilliant, and you're it right. Gonna, it made it a bigger moment in the way they did it somehow because there was, was that anticipation there and then the lull and then it almost like made it even better. <laughs> it was, but I, I, I was expecting something to happen. You know, yeah. I was like, you can't, you just can't be Jinder. Like, it's such a great show. And, <laughs> you know, I don't mind Jinder, to be honest. I think he's took a lot of flack over the years. Yeah. And actually, I think I think he played his part really, really well in this. He did. Um, but I, I just thought, yeah. I just thought they couldn't have done it any better. Um, but yeah, back to the women's mm. tag. They they had a, a hard, a tough act to follow. Um, but yeah, they they kind of did themselves. They didn't do themselves any harm, really. They no. went out and did, they did a good job. But it just, 
it was just hard to compete with that. You, you must have, yeah, when they just read it at the back, and you, you must have looked there, must have thought, fuck my life. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> they might have even been it. there in that gorilla position <laughs> and not even knowing that The Rock was going to be, and then he just strolls up and he's just like, oh, <laughs> shit. You just imagine it, you're sitting there waiting to go out. You're being, oh, yep, we're next, this dickhead's gone out, we're having a great... Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's yeah. it, he just walks out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it was kind of predict not say predictable. There was a, a picture that done the rounds on socials um that day of the rock about two hours away meeting somebody, and in the background was Nick Khan. Yeah, apparently he'd met Nick Khan or something. I yeah, that. but it was probably just to finalize the stuff with Roman. But you know, it still doesn't take away the fact they trolled you big time uh, with it, and they done a great job. Uh, the Imagine women... Triple H having a good laugh when, when oh he, he, music, was, he was loving it. Wasn't he? They showed the crowd as well, and everyone was just like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. that was the best and it, it, that was the best part on near enough of it the fact yeah. they had the crowd there as that music oh, it was if you haven't gone and seen it yet go and watch it it is i mean i think it's already got something like 12 million hits on socials we need to sort of find out what they're doing to get, yeah yeah but uh yeah you're right the women's tag match after that was in a poison chalice um coincidentally they have announced that they're going to be doing a special show on thursday um on Peacock, uh, or the cock, as uh, Matt Sally McAfee called it. Um, and on that show, uh, they're going to be a special preview show. Um, CM Punk's going to be on it. Uh, Rhea Ripley, Elia Dragunov, Bianca Belair, Montez Ford. And Triple H is going to do a major announcement. On that show first. So we need to see when we wake up Friday morning what that announcement is. Um, we'll be baiting breath. I mean, it's not like, you know, it, generally it's a good... These are good things when he makes announcements, so we'll have to see. Um, they did announce that next week, we've already mentioned Nakamura and Cody, uh, Katana Chance and Caden Carter will defend the women's titles in a rematch with Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. And then we get to the main event. Um, Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre for the title. Um, really, really, really good match. Um, you wouldn't have expected anything less from these two. Really good near fall with the bit where McIntyre kind of pulled Seth Rollins' foot onto the rope. Uh, near the oh, end. I thought that was such a clever finish. Clever really, finish. Really. It wasn't the end. Uh, the referee did notice yeah. it. Um, then there was the cash-in attempt um, from Priest, which Drew McIntyre gives him the claymore. Belly to belly's Dominic Mysterio. He comes back in the ring and basically Seth Rollins stomps him to pick up the victory. Um, the match itself was great. I'll get in with that to you in a minute, Dave. My rant about this money, I'm sick and tired of these false cash-ins. Now, for me, I don't want any false cash-ins. I want when that music to hit, you know that he's cashing in. and that yeah. Because the, for me, the suspense has gone with, with Priest now. I, and I know that it's probably going to be unsuccessful when he does cash it in eventually. But what was so good about the money in the bank of old is that there wasn't any false cash-ins. Like when Edge done it with, or Copeland done it with Cena, when Ziggler done it with Del Rio, you know, there was no of this, I'm cashing in, okay, it, I'm cashing in, bang, it happens, one, two, three. This for me has, and it's not necessarily just Priest. Priest has had probably the most attempted cash-ins, maybe Austin Fury up there as well. It's boring now. I'm not excited about him cashing in the money in the bank, even if he wins it now, because there's been so much force. You know, I think it was it Austin Fury got knocked out by uh, Tyson Fury. When yeah, he got, yeah. Oh, I was there, yeah. Gosh, you near it when it happened. Yeah. Um, it just got, it's now lost that sus suspense, I suppose, or that excitement for me. Because every time I see the music now, I'm like, oh, this isn't going to happen. Um, yeah. That's the only downside to it. A priest is world championship material all day in my opinion i think he's great but i'm just not i would rather they take that give that as a hiatus now give it a year or two before you bring it back but anyway uh, your thoughts on the match and the uh, attempted cash in day <clears throat> i thought the match was phenomenal yeah. really really good another somebody like we said about nia jack seemed motivated drew mcintyre seems massively motivated i don't know if that's because his contracts come coming up or whether that because he wants to stay or he wants to go but for whatever reason you know he he just looked super motivated and this was a great match i love the clever finish because he kind of got the visual pin he had seth beat and it was his own mistake or, you know, ro rolling Seth too far and he, he's caught the rope 
he was kind of his own mistake as to why he didn't win. Mm-hmm. Um, interestingly, I think that's like 12 matches in a row, 12 title matches in a row now that Drew's gone into and lost. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I think this was a little bit different because as I say, it was his own, it was his own doing. And then you got the spot with the pedigree and then the stomp to to finish things off. Um, Seth retains in terms of the cash in. I totally, totally agree where you come to see where you're coming from. Yeah. Uh, I suppose I haven't seen as much of the cash ins, but it seems to me they like wanted Damien in that role. They wanted him to have the title, um, the the opportunity, but they hadn't really decided on what they were going to do with it. Or obviously, there's been some other factors as well. CM Punk, now The Rock, people yeah. in that main event scene that has perhaps creatively affected the plan for Damien Priest. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't, I don't think we needed this cash in or this attempted cash in because I don't think, I don't know, I, 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 even as somebody that hasn't been watching as much lately, I, I didn't really believe that Damien was going to win the title. Mm. It was just a way of what they're going to do. So he doesn't, you know, how are they going to get out of it? So yeah, yeah, that could have been better in, in hindsight. Um, but yeah, he's, he's still got that briefcase, so he's still got that opportunity at some point, yeah. as and when he does actually catch it in. Yeah, exactly that. And as I say, it doesn't really have that thing for me at the moment. But as you say, I've seen enough of these failed attempts to, you know, for me, for me, for it to lose its excitement when it does happen, you know. But yeah, who knows when he does do it? When he does do it, will he be successful? I, I don't think so. But I don't know when do it. I was thinking about this. Obviously, the the Cody finishing the story. Oh, that's what we've had for two years. Imagine if Cody were to finish the story, whenever that may be, whenever he, if he does beat Roman for the title and then Damian Priest cashes in and beats him straight away. He's Could that happen? Do it by July. Yeah. Just when it, but that would be, that would just be, a, that would be, but it's nearly as funny as that whole rock thing. Yeah, you want to be like emotional. They're putting tears in the crowd for people. Yeah, yeah. Rose winning it. The picture of Dusty and Brandy comes <laughs> out and Randy comes, comes out, out with the dog. Owes him. <laughs> Brandy comes out. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be so. Oh, Dave, you need to get a job with WWE. Triple A. Yeah, oh, oh, there's oh. definitely some. I, I don't know. I don't know how, you'd, uh, how happy Cody would be with that, or you know, you just don't, you don't know, do you? But <laughs> I, I, I think if he was to ultimately finish the story, and then the story was just lasted thirty seconds or a minute, oh, uh, yeah, said it right. The story never ends. No, exactly that. And Cody's in his prime. He's got many more WrestleManias and main events in him. You know, in his career, uh, it would just be. I think it would be a stunning thing to happen. In, in terms of the reaction, as you say, all that emotion, the fanfare, the balloons come down, the streamers go off, and then the Judgment Day's music hits. Or yeah, Mate, maybe that's the way. Maybe they should do that. Nick Khan pulled about he's available for a price, but he's, it's not. It's not a very high price. But well, hang on a minute, though. <laughs> <laughs> let's not go. Let's not get too uh, ahead of yourself there. Or don't put yourself down too much. That's brilliant. Uh, just a quick one. Uh, because this news has literally just broken, as, as you know, some during I, I do scroll through uh, 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 socials. Uh, sources within the WWE and Impact Wrestling have told Fightful Select, Sean Rossap, that they expect Naomi to return to the WWE or Trinity to return to the WWE, barring any unforeseen circumstances. Okay. Uh, not a major, major surprise, given okay. the relationship with uh, Jimmy Uso. Yeah. Um, you know, Andrade as well. Apparently, he's very close. Um, there's something happening in NXT in terms of a mystery partner or it's Carlito. Oh, okay. So... I read some of the um, Dragon Lee, yeah, and visa compete is... or something. Yeah, visa problems. Yeah. Okay. So, because I was say Andrade would be a great get for WWE, but at the minute, where would he fit in? That where would he fit thing. in? You know. Yeah. Well, I spoke about it yesterday. I, I don't think that he. I, I can't see what he would do there that he wasn't already doing. Yeah, you you would think maybe he would have to go to NXT. And I don't think that would be like a demotion as such. No. Um, you know, NXT is doing some really good things and, and um but yeah, would you go from a prominent role in AEW to NXT? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but Andrade is somebody as well, as well as Naomi, that you know, that maybe maybe their Royal Rumble. 
um, yeah. you know, participants as well. Naomi, I think what they were saying, I was just reading a bit further down, was she's probably going to be in the Rumble. I mean, Mickey James was the top knockouts champion and come in the Rumble Cup. So they may still do a little crossover because she hasn't lost. I don't think, I think she's still the no. champion. Yeah, I think I'm what actually, well, actually, while we're here, I'm just going to let you know that I'll be bringing back the Impact Review. Now, yeah, TNA, I'm going to start reviewing TNA's uh, Impact this week. From this week, two weeks before the pay-per-view, I'll be uh, reviewing that this week. So I'm looking forward to that. But they can do it. I mean, they've done it with yeah. Nikki James, and she can still work for Impact and then finish up there and come back to WWE. Um, but let's finish off with a score. I mean, mate, score for Raw. I mean, I'm giving Raw a nine. I, I, I can't. I can't fault it. I can't, I don't really give any tens. I'm not like Meltzer that gives out five star ratings and, and all the, you know, the highest stars or goes over. I, I can't give anything a 10, but Raw was as near as perfection as I could give it. Um, so for me, it gets a nine. And it, this week's TV has got a hell of a lot of things to, to get that high. Smack, yeah, yeah. I mean, SmackDown's looking good. SmackDown's looking stacked. New Year's Re uh, Revolution. Triple threat match for the uh, number one contendership for Roman Reigns is shot at the Royal Rumble. We've got so much going on. Obviously, we've got the the fallout from World's End. Uh, we know it, 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 on Wednesday on Dynamite or Thursday we'll review it, but Wednesday uh, night. So we've got that. Could we see Mercedes Monet debut? So we've got a lot of stuff going on in AEW. We're going to do Impact Wrestling as well. That's hyping up their first show as TNA and their Hard to Kill pay-per-view where they're going to give a big acquisition as well. Yeah. What a time to be a fan, Dave. I know. I know. I mean, in terms of a score, it's a minimum of a nine. Yeah. You know, you, you, you could really push nine and a half. I mean, obviously there's the the unfortunate incident with the head injury. Yeah. Um and and yeah, the the, the tag match following the rock it, it was always gonna it was always doomed. Yeah. Um I don't think anybody could have done a, a better job given the circumstances. So at least a nine, at least a nine. Um, great show, great week of wrestling coming up. I think you've got me. Um, yeah, I think I'll try and watch it TNA as well this week. I've already added five extra areas of wrestling this week with Raw and SmackDown. Um, but it's just, I just want to watch everything at the minute. I'm really looking forward to Dynamite. I think yeah. we've got some good stuff lined up for Collision as well. Yeah. Uh, FTR. FTR House of Black. Yeah. So, Ooh. yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's really going to be a fantastic week of wrestling, but WWE have gone out there with Raw and said, follow that. You know, it's even to their own talent and, and guys that we didn't see on Raw. Obviously, we got Orton, and I don't know if Reigns is on SmackDown or scheduled for SmackDown. I'm not this sure, week. but I know that they say they know there's a triple threat match, Styles, uh, Styles, LA Knight, Randy Orton main event to take on Roman. Well. Yeah, so I predict Orton wins that because I think AJ and LA Knight yeah. will face each other. Um, and then the Orton, Cody, Rain stuff is alive as well then. Um, so maybe it does go in that direction. But I'm looking forward to every... And I've, I haven't felt that way in, in so long. As much as I've enjoyed wrestling the last 12 months, I think 2024, going off the back of this show, mm -hmm. it could be the best year for wrestling ever. You know, creatively, financially, you know, in terms of... Fan involvement, participation, people coming back, old fans coming back, watching it, new fans, kids getting into it. I think 2024 is going to be a huge year for wrestling. It is. Um, and New Year's Evil, uh, NXT, you mentioned it, New Year's Evil tonight as well. Um, well, tonight, tomorrow, would have been happened by the time this goes out, but yeah, yeah. tonight. So things are looking good. Um, I've got to get through now a lot of stuff that we've got, we've got <laughs> coming up. Um so we've got CPF. They're coming. They're close personal friends, uh, a group that we lost Bray's a big fan of. Uh, it's uh, Maverick Mayhew, uh, Danny Black, and Joe. I've got to do a three-on-one interview. That's like, uh, I'm dead. Uh, but they're going to be great that they're coming on. Um, we have got Progress Wrestling's Lee McAteer coming on uh, this, uh, well, I think this week, actually, I believe. Maybe even Friday. Uh, this week potentially um, Hustle Malone is coming on he's actually got another since he put out the um, uh, booking that he was into bookings and we all reshared it he's got six bookings so congratulations to Hustle uh, don't knock the hustle right he's yeah. coming um, Chase Anthony who is a ring announcer he's a general manager he's pretty much every job in wrestling he's coming on uh, as well uh, we've got Mims from uh, NWA Coming on, we've got Tommy Kyle, uh, the Maverick, who you will see, Dave, uh, uh, yeah, tonight, uh, coming yeah. on as well. 
Jay Joshua's coming on. Now, he's in the main event at Ignite. Uh, so he's coming on uh, on later on at the end of the month, near the end of the month, to talk all things Ignite. We've got Ring of... Uh, we've got Ring of Honor. We've got um, Revolution Pro Wrestling's... Uh, and now the ring announcer, uh, Francesca Oliver. So the ring of the Revolution Pro's uh, Samantha Irvin. Uh, Francesca Oliver's coming on. She's one of the most sweetest women in wrestling. She's coming on uh, so far. And there's also Brian Clark that will be coming on soon. Adam Bomb, he's in the process of moving house. So we've got to, you know, can't can't expect him to come on. Um, the son of the British Bulldog will be coming on. Uh, Harry Smith, David Boy Smith Jr. will be coming on at some point. Now, at Ignite, as we already know, Smashing Mike will be taking on uh, Jesus, who's he taking on? Uh, Eddie Dennis, bloody hell, Eddie Dennis uh, on the 4th of February. Now, I have been told by CJ Khan uh, there is going to be a big announcement on that show, which involves us, um, which we will be announcing at the show in February. Uh, and CJ Khan will be coming on, as he normally does, just before the chapter chapter three show to talk to probably me and you, Dave. You obviously can appear if you if you if you are available. I know you're yeah, a man with your work yeah. and stuff. Um once that's booked in, I'll let you know. But he'll be coming on as well. Think I've got all the news. I've worked it out though, Dave. If you include review shows, uh, we have got more shows going out than there is days in the month. Yeah. <laughs> and and you got a full time job. Uh, yes, yes. And a very exactly. understanding part. And so have you. Yeah, yeah, full time. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know, it's the love of the game though, mate, is it? <laughs> For the love of the game. But guys, we're going to wrap it up there. We need to go to sleep. we got to get work in the morning. Dave's got boilers to instill. I've got technology to sell. Um, so for that <laughs> note, keep an eye out on all of our socials at HTT Buckle on uh, X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Um, go on to uh, Hating the Turnbuckle podcast and all other social media outlets. Just one other shout out. Our good friend Tommy Lawrence, uh, the playmaker, who has been, you've seen Ignite a few times, he has got, uh, he started his own promotion, uh, SCW, uh, Supremacy Championship Wrestling, and they are doing a debut show uh, the 16th of March over in the St. Faith's Community Centre in Post Hill in London. Uh, tickets are already on sale for that. Go on to SCW-UK on socials. Go on SCW on Facebook. You'll see it, or Supremacy Championship Wrestling on Facebook. There is a, a QR code you can scan. Get your tickets for that show. Don't miss the debut of that show. Uh, Tommy Kyle is going to be there. Kay and Lane's going to be there. I believe, I think, uh, Levi Muir may be there as well. Um, so get your tickets to that. But guys, thank you to Dave uh, for coming in and uh, going across the forbidden door. We will be back with the AEW and NWA reviews. There's Impact Wrestling, the SmackDown, there's Collision. I disappeared off the screen briefly. <laughs> because I, uh, but yeah, just join us for all of that, guys. Uh, and this has been the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast with the problem child, Dave Robinson, or Raw is Robinson. I have been your host, the brilliant uh, Adam Cousins. And until next time, everybody, buckle down and stay safe.